Today, what we're going to work on is demystifying credit scores. And I always make the joke, if you're standing at a cocktail party or whatever, and all of a sudden start, people start going, well, what's your credit score? You know, and it's kind of an interesting conversation. And it's really understanding what is a credit score, um, how it impacts your life, and things that we can do to improve this. So let's describe first, what is your credit score? Well, there are four major companies in the United States that collect our financial data. And this is for everybody. So if, you have, if you're paying on rent, if you have a mortgage, if you have a car note, if you have utility payments, if you have anything that's kind of an ongoing payment, it's going to be reported to these different four companies. And they're going to collect this data and they are going to analyze it and they're going to give it a, a numerical score. Okay. And that numerical score can be anywhere from excellent to good. We'll start on that end of the spectrum to poor. Okay. And so when we take a look at and we find out what our credit score is, I want to bring up a slide that shows the the different categories here. This is the thing that you need to remember when you're talking about your FICA score. If you're between 750 and 830, we're at excellent. We want to be in this good range. We want to be over, we want to have a credit score that is north of 700. We start sliding into the fair to bad to very bad range. And if your credit score is below 560, you've got some work out there to bring that score up. The good news is, it's not really that difficult. And the reason that I say that is there are basically five major factors that go into calculating what your credit score is. And we've put this specifically in a font that, because I want to show what's important, okay? Your payment history makes up 35% of your entire credit score. Another 30% is how much do you owe? Have you got a mortgage? Have you got car loans? Have you got credit card debt outstanding? How much they're going to take a look and they're going to summarize how much debt you have out there. On a lesser scale, we're talking about years of credit history. So if you're a younger person and you're at the beginning of your career, you may only have a credit card for the last year, two, five, something along those lines. As you have credit and you have these credit cards and you have a history, including your rent, if you're renting an apartment or if you're buying a house, it shows those years of credit. Also, you know, how often are you applying for new credit? They want to see a fair amount of using credit, but they don't want to see that where the ding comes is if you're out there and you've got multiple new credit on a yearly basis. And then also the types of credit. There is good credit. There's good loans out there, mortgages, car loans, okay? Some things that you want to stay away from, ongoing credit card debt. Student debt is a big thing right now. There's been a lot of forbearance, a lot of forgiveness of payments. But you want to make sure that you're taking a look at making sure your student loans are up to date. Also, and the main thing you want to stay away from is any of these payday loans or hard title loans. You want to stay towards a good quality debt and away from the poor quality debt. Let me give you a real world example of this. I just bought a new used car. And I'm going to give an example of if you go into the dealership and we're going to finance $30,000 to purchase a car, the rate that I got was 4.69% because I have really good credit. And I want to also make a comment. This is based on five years, uh, a five-year car loan. And just a side note, I really don't recommend financing a car for more than 60 months, for no more than five years. If you're paying longer on it, it'll lower the payments, but you're, you're also borrowing against a car that will be five years old at that point. You want to be aware of that. But what, happened, what would happen if I walked into the dealership and my credit rating wasn't as good, and they came back and they said, Phil, we're only going to, allow, we're going to lend you the money, but we're going to require an interest rate of 10% for the next five years. Well, it makes an amazing difference. In fact, it makes about a $75 a month difference when you take a look at the payments and you, with bringing the payments up. What you will notice is if you have good credit, you're paying that $75 plus a month less 
which actually winds up being a total of more than $4,500 over the next five years. And here's a choice. I'm making the decision that I get to keep that $75 a month because on the example of $10,000 or 10%, all that is is additional interest. You're going to pay the same $30,000 back, but the difference is I'm keeping $75 extra just because of my credit score. Okay. And this is what a credit, a good credit score does for you. It makes life less expensive. You'll have lower mortgage rates. You'll have lower car loan rates. You may have a lesser security deposit requirement if you're going out renting an apartment. A good credit score can even help you get, or a poor credit score can prevent you from getting jobs. I can tell you that if you go to work in a bank, they're going to run your credit score. They want people that have a good credit score handling their money. And you may not get the job if you've got a lesser credit score. So let's talk about some action steps in order to go through. How do we improve this? First off, if you're finding yourself needing an improvement, there is no overnight instant credit that's going to add 100 points to your credit score. Okay, this is a long haul. But the first thing you got to do is pay on time. So if you've got your utility bills, you've got your, your phone, your, your mobile phone, you've got your internet, you've got all these things that are coming in, paying all of that on time. And the great part is with the technology we have today, it's extremely easy. It's not like we're having, a, oh, I got to remember to mail a check in. The great part is set those payments up, pay it on time. The second part is, and this goes beyond the credit score, it's good to borrow money. To go up, be able to go out and have a mortgage and to buy a piece of property and not have to accumulate all the cash is a positive thing. But you don't want to bury yourself in debt. You don't want to bury yourself in a car loan, for example. I mean, it's great to drive a nice car, but don't make this to where it just buries you and, and you're going to wind up living in the car, if you will. If you take these two prime steps, if you remember 35% is paying on time and 30% is, is how much you owe, that debt structure, these two things will greatly improve your credit score They will and they will improve quickly. I want to close with this. Remember that this is pretty much like a game. You need to know the rules to the game. But in order, if you're doing these types of things, you're going to see consistent improvement over a period of time. But you're going to see times when your credit score is going up sometimes and sometimes when your credit score is going down. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to listen to our presentation.